In this video we're going to continue our overview of LoRaWAN connectivity. On the slide you can see on the screen has already been covered in the previous video which shows you the data flow or the architecture for LoRaWAN. We're going to be working on some videos, building up some practical exercises and the architecture we're going to use for this example is seen on screen. So the network server is going to be the ThinkStack. You can register for a free account. It looks like now you can have 10 sensors with 10 gateways, but you'll probably be limited on the amount of applications you can have. So in this video, we're going to, we're going to show you how that um, performs. We're not going to build the project up. We're just going to show you the end product. But with regards to the hardware, the first thing that we've selected is the Things Network Gateway, which retails for about £90. 100 euros, roughly around that. The backhaul is limited to Wi-Fi only, which is fine if you're working in an office testing this. And the reason I've gone for this rather than building my own on a Raspberry Pi, if you're able to get hold of a Raspberry Pi, it'd have to be a Raspberry Pi maybe 4 or um, a W2, which is 64-bit operating. Then you'd have to buy the boards, then maybe power supply, and then an enclosure. Honestly, by the time you've done all of that and the time and effort you put in, if you're really looking to, to use LoRaWAN and you want to investigate it further, it's probably easier just to buy a gateway. And you're going to be closer to what you would expect in the real world, and that's what we're trying to achieve. The two sensors we've got, I've selected a mile site sensor. I've used this really to, to test what a real sensor looks like. So this sensor it has humidity and temperature on, it's battery powered and at the top the um, WAN1310 is a Arduino board which allows us to have a bit of a free reign on how we want to develop the code. So that's the, the architecture, the next thing I want to show you is how it actually looks like in the real world so we'll take a look at the thing stack network server for LoRaWAN. So this is the ThinkStack uh, network server for LoRaWAN. This is what you get, it's telling you all your different components, application server, gateway server, joint server, all down here are, are okay. And then I have two parts of my architecture that I need to be concerned with, the gateway and then my application. So if I click on my gateway, I have one gateway registered and I have to register the gateway here on this platform. Can't do it on site. I need this, this information, again, an EUI code, gateway EUI code from the gateway, and then it connects, and there's a, there's a couple of procedures to do. I'll cover that in another video. For this free login, I can connect 10 gateways. They could be all over the country. I, bit, I think I'm limited for Europe with this, with this particular login. And under here, once it's registered, I can see it's connected, program where it is, and I can see the, the traffic here coming through. And then you have something called a network operations center. So this is the network operations center. It's just looking at the data traffic in more detail. You can see here yesterday, it's going to be a bit strange, but yesterday I was working on the Arduino board. So the traffic went up. It's still relatively low. I then turned it off and then it was just reporting the mile site sensor in so the, the utilisation is very very low and then I had another little play with the Arduino board and then I could see here that it was relatively low. I can also see the different frequencies I'm using here and how, how well they're being utilised and then I have my spreading factors at the bottom this really is just a, a Grafana report of the data that um, is, is being collected. And I can see here my uptime is 100% is for, for this gateway. So there's some nice diagnostics there. So this is my network server. So like, as I said, I can have multiple gateways up to 10 in different locations. And when I power up a sensor close to that gateway, that's when I now see the traffic coming through my network server, it decides what gateway to route it through, but then I need to go onto the application server. So here we have application. I only have one. I think you may be limited here. 
but this one's already set up I can see here my application my name and two end devices so let's just click on on this I can see the traffic for that um, application server and I can have multiple gateways connecting to this application server it doesn't matter as long as my sensors are registered on this application you see here this is the Arduino gateway it's a manual push from the Arduino serial monitor so I haven't done anything here for, for a long time and then here I have my mile site sensor that's sending data every 15 minutes so in 15 minutes that should go back to zero and you can see here your device EUI codes and your join EUI codes for, for that device. If I want to see the data in more detail, I can click on one of these and then I can see the live data coming backwards and forwards. If I go back to my Arduino sensor, I just want to show you something called the adaptive data rate, which is another function for, of the network server. So let's have a look at is live data and let's focus on this period yesterday when I was testing it so you can see here that I requested to join so this is the sense I requesting to join because I've got the correct information in there it's forward the join accept and sent my um, session keys over and then it's successfully processing my message so this is my, I'm sending a message from the Arduino to the cloud. You can see here, 1708, test. And what it's done for the very first data transmission, it doesn't know how good the network is. So it's used the slowest spreading factor that can cope with the most noise. And that's spreading factor 12. The next time I transmit, it's going, well, I don't need spreading factor 12. Let's try lowering the spreading factor to get faster. So it's gone to eight and it's still happy there. So again, I've gone to the next spreading factor, seven on the next data transmission. I've been transmitting the same data all of the time. So that's the adaptive data rate. Now, if this gateway or this route to the application through a gateway disappeared, so it was further away to the next gateway, it would probably automatically switch the adaptive data rate and for the next gateway and try and establish what is the, the best route. You can turn off adaptive data rate, I think, on the sensor. But it's a nice example here of the, the code landing in the application server. If we have a look here at the end devices, we have something called integration. And this is where it's pushing the data. So, yes, we have some data here. It's showing me the diagnostics, but it's not really an application database that you would start using in anger you know to to do alarms and everything else this is purely is my comms working is my payload formatter correct yes okay now i need to decide where i'm going to push the data and you can see here there's various options i'm pushing it to azure iot hub and as part of that setup it sets up a digital twin so what's really nice with that is every time I register a device, a sensor, on here, it automatically sets that sensor in my IoT hub. So let's take a look at what that looks like next. On the screen now, you can see my IoT hub in Azure, and this is the traffic that I've, had, I've got landing. Uh, for my free sandbox version, I've got 400,000 messages per day. You can see here it's registered two devices. If I go to my devices, you can see here it's pulled through the information and then I have my device EU and my join codes now all on, on Azure. As it's a digital twin, if I register the device through my things stack network, it will automatically register it on here. To finish off this demo, I'm going to show you the data coming from the Arduino all the way into Azure and the Digital Twin. So I have my Arduino code here. I have my join keys that I've put in. And I'm going just to, to restart this. And the reason I've restarted this is to force it to, to rejoin to the 
um, network server. I can see here that I've joined to the network server. I can force this to put some timestamps on here so we can see everything working. So it's asking me to put in my, my new message. So I'll type in test, hit return. I've got new line feed on as it says here. So this message has been sent at 1804. And we can see here on my uh, application server for this device, there's the device EUI, and there it is on my sensor. So I can see they align. But I can also see here this is the, the data that I've sent. This data has been automatically forwarded to, the, to my Azure account and the digital twin I've got of the device. So here it is. So I've just sent test, don't forget. So if I click on to this product, which has got the same EUI, I can see here device twin, and this will show the, the last data. There is a time and date stamp on it, but what I'm looking for is the payload. So all this additional information is what we call the header information. So within here, we should have um, the device ID, and you can also send the... RSSI and the signal to noise ratio. So it says here that the payload is, is test. So if we go back to our sensor, like I say, it's a manual process at the moment. And we just say, hello, sexy. Send that. That shows you here the encrypted or the hexadecimal version of that string. And then I have a payload formatter set on my application server that turns that back into text. So let's just see if I can refresh this. You can see now the payload says, hey, hello, sexy. So there we have it all the way from the sensor through the ThingStack uh, cloud version all the way to my digital twin on IoT Hub. And that's how LoRaWAN works practically. What we're going to do over the next few videos is show you how to actually implement that. But for now, thanks for listening. Don't forget to share this channel with your friends and colleagues and see you again soon.